Got another exam question walkthrough for A level chemistry. So this is paper three, questions number 44. If you want to check out the other videos in the playlist, I'll put the link to that at the top of the screen now. So this question deals with acid base equilibria, shapes of molecules, oxidation number, and then there's an application type question based around the Kegelase structure. Hope you liked the video, hope you find it helpful, and if you haven't already subscribed to the channel, I would love you to do so. But as always, the link to the questions in the description of the video if you want to try it first. So first part of it, we've got some information about H3PO4. It's a tri-basic acid, so it donates three moles of protons per mole of the acid, and we've got the three dissociations involved. So you notice there, I've just highlighted this H2PO4 minus that we're interested in. So it's in that equation there and in that one there. And we've got to show why it's acting as both an acid and a base. Um, so just a reminder, an acid is a proton donor and a base is a proton acceptor. So if we look at equilibrium number one, what's this H2PO4 minus doing? It's accepting a proton. So in equilibrium one, it's a base. In equilibrium two, what's it doing? It's donating a proton. So in that equilibrium, it's acting as an acid. So there's all that written up there. Moving on to the next part, so we've got to draw the diagram for the H3PO3 molecule and then work out a couple of uh, the bond angles. So we've got some information that the oxygen atoms are covalently bonded to that single phosphorus atom and then the hydrogen atoms are bonded to those oxygen atoms. So a diagram like that is perfectly fine, it shows that information. So now let's think about the angles around the phosphorus. So this angle here and around the oxygens, so these angles here. Okay, so starting with the phosphorus, remember phosphorus is in group five. It's using three of its five valence electrons in those three single covalent bonds. So there's a lone pair around that phosphorus as well. So we've got four regions of electrons. So the starting angle is 109.5 but we take two and a half degrees off for the extra repulsion from the lone pair. So that means that the OPO angle is 107 degrees. So moving on to the POH angle. So we'll just use this oxygen here to explain this one. So oxygen's in group six, six valence electrons. It's using two in those two single covalent bonds. So the oxygen's got two lone pairs around it as well. So we've still got four electron regions around there, but we've got two lone pairs. So we're gonna take off five degrees from the 109.5 starting angle, which means that that angle is 104.5 degrees. Next part, so we're told that the systematic name, so systematic name in this respect includes the oxidation number of the phosphorus in this case. So in this Thing here it's the phosphorus is in its plus five oxidation state hence that Roman five there so all we've got to do is work out the oxidation state of the phosphorus in this one and then name it like that so we've got three hydrogens in H3PO3 each one has an oxidation number of plus one so we've got plus three from that we've got three oxygens each one at minus two so we've got minus six from that the whole thing's got no overall charge so what does this phosphorus need to be? It needs to be plus three. So that means the systematic name is phosphoric three, Roman three acid. Part B, so we've got some information here. Phosphine, PH3, poisonous gas, reacts with oxygen to form phosphorus five oxide and water. We've got to come up with the equation. So basically we're gonna to have to work out what the formula of this is and then write the equation. Okay, so phosphorus oxide is obviously made from phosphorus and oxygen. The oxidation number of the phosphorus is plus five because of that Roman five there. Oxygen is negative two. So what ratio of those atoms will give us a neutral overall compound? Well, it's going to be P2O5. You could also have P4O10. So I'll give you both versions of the equation. So if you've gone for the P2O5 option, there's the balanced equation for that. And if you've gone for the P4O10 version, there's the balanced equation for that. 
Next part of B, we've got to balance this redox reaction and explain why it's a redox reaction, but we've got to use oxidation numbers. So I'm actually going to use oxidation numbers to help balance the equation. Okay, so the silver starts out in its plus one oxidation state and it goes down to zero. So a drop in oxidation number is a reduction process. So we can say that's why it's the, the, that's the reduction process in the reaction. And then the phosphorus has gone from minus three up to plus three. So there's an increase in oxidation number. So that's the oxidation process. So we're going to use the oxidation number changes now to balance this redox reaction. So the rule is the total decrease in oxidation number has to equal the total increase. So our total, our decrease is one plus one to zero. Our total increase is six. So obviously that doesn't match. So what we need to do is make them equal to each other. So the easiest way to do it is to put a six in front of the silver species. So that now means that we've got a total decrease of six because we've got six moles involved in the, in the equation. We don't want to touch the P containing substances, otherwise that'll mess up what we've just done. So all we need to do now is balance the H2O and the HNO3. So we need a three in front of the H2O and a six in front of the HNO3. Moving on to part C, so we've got some information about this compound P3N3Cl6. Um, so we're told it's got a cyclic structure, so it's a ring, and it's got a structure like the Kekulé structure for benzene. So you'll notice I've drawn that up there. So the first thing we've got to do is write an equation for the reaction of PCl5 and ammonium chloride to form this substance here. So there's the unbalanced equation. We weren't given the formula of ammonium chloride, so we're expected to know that from memory, NH4Cl. So I'll just balance it now. PCl5, 3NH4Cl, one of those, and 12 moles of HCl. Moving on to the next part, so we've got to calculate the percentage biomass of phosphorus in P3N3Cl6, two decimal places for our final answer. So we need to know the total MR of the molecule and there are three P's in it. So the MR of three P's divided by the total MR times 100 gives us our percentage. So there's the numbers there and the final answer is 26.72%. Remember, two decimal places needed. Next part, so suggest an example of evidence that would show that this has a Kekulé structure rather than a delocalized structure. So just kind of testing your knowledge of your benzene chemistry really and applying it to this. So remember, Kekulé suggested this alternating carbon-carbon double, carbon-carbon single bonded six-membered ring. So if that was correct, then the carbon-carbon bond lengths would be different because the double bond slightly shorter than the single bond. So you could use that as your answer. So all you would need to say there is there are different bond lengths in the ring. And for the last part, we've got to come up with a structure, a possible structure that works for this, given this information. And again, I'm just going to kind of base my answer around the Kekulé structure. So there it is again. C6H6 is the formula for benzene. So you can kind of see we've got six atoms there, P3N3, and then six Cls there. So we could create a ring of alternating phosphorus and nitrogens. So that ties in with this information here that all the nitrogen atoms are bonded to the phosphorus atoms. Definitely got that going on there. So we need to give it like a Kekulé type structure. So if we do alternating double, single, double, single, double, single. So that's the next phase of the diagram. And then remember we've got six chlorines to factor in and the chlorine atoms are all bonded to phosphorus as well. So I need to put two chlorines on each phosphorus atom. So that's a possible structure and it does work because if you remember phosphorus is in group five, it's making five covalent bonds. Nitrogen is also in group five, but it only forms three covalent bonds. One, two, three, just think of NH3. So three bonds to your nitrogens and chlorine only forms one covalent bond. So that's what it's doing in that structure. So that structure works.